of response from the person called was it jazzy okay this is jazzy right oh no this is jazzy okay cool so this must be the person that i called a whore i think <laughs> so i do <laughs> i guess somewhat apologize i think in the beginning yeah, i've actually got it i think in the beginning of the rolling stones article there's a person here featured who's one of the prominent people yeah this is a person jasmine wolf um i think this person was the one i called a whore because if i'm not mistaken she was with her partner oh no they separated but she was living in the same house as her husband or ex-partner i guess separated but they were living together because of the sake of the daughter and because she was alone and vulnerable she started texting comedians and then she went and licked the guy no and then she i think she sent the guy a fucking video of herself fingering herself the first day they, they started contact i was like dude that's weird as fuck so i'm guessing other people have felt the same way about her account i'm assuming that's why she replied in the iPhone app reply thing that we got here on the screen. So let's read the response here and see what she has to say about the whole thing. So this is courtesy of the Chris Lea Uncensored subreddit. So it said, what's this? Is it trigger warning, um, essay, I guess, sexual abuse, eating disorder, sexual violence. So in light of recent responses to the Rolling Stones article, there are a few things I want to further explain. First, I want to make it very clear. I didn't know Chris was in a relationship. He made it seem like it was a one-off thing that he got a girl pregnant. Not once before. Yeah, that's true. That shows a good point though. That that was what he was trying to do, wasn't it? Because I didn't even know he had a girl, literally. I didn't know that was a thing. He never really spoke about it on the podcast. He kept that stuff, I guess, somewhat private, but he didn't even allude to it. So when it was known that he had someone pregnant, I just assumed it was some random person from the road. I didn't actually you know think it was somebody he was actually been in a long-term relationship with so a lot of these guys are like this they have a secret like they have a secret relationship and then they go out on the road and do what the fuck they want i guess madness anyway um uh the, the, that he got a random girl pregnant not once before i found out for myself would he admit to me that they were in or had been in a relationship at any point it wasn't as though he was talking negatively about his partner in the first months he adamantly denied any form of relationship i'm 28 now I was 25 when Chris and I began seeing each other. I was also not married at the time. My husband and I had split up. We were merely living together. Yeah, but that doesn't make it cool though, innit? Like, I don't know. Not that it makes it cool. I'm just saying, if I'm going through a tumultuous relationship with my partner and we have a kid at home, the last thing I'm thinking about is getting my dick sucked. Like, that's just me personally. I guess people are different. Maybe in that moment, you, you're actually more vulnerable and you need somebody to actually kind of take your mind off things. I get it. But you have to also understand from strangers' point of view, from people that don't know you and aren't involved in this, it looks a bit weird that the first thing you do is go and reach out to a comedian and then you're going out. And then in the first day, if I'm not mistaken, that Rolling Stones article, let's actually read it. I, I swear she like sent the guy a nude the first day she contacted him or something. Let's see here. Uh... Yeah, Wolf, Jasmine Wolf was visibly uncomfortable sitting on the driver's seat of a car in, in an open parking lot. The 20-year-old looked around and drew a quick breath, glancing at her phone, perched on the dashboard, recording her. Awaiting a reply on the other end was comedian Chris D'Elia, who Wolf had instructed her to send over an explicit video of herself in public view. That's the opening fucking paragraph. Wolf had only seconds to comply. She didn't send over the footage fast enough. She knew she'd be, become furious. She had already told Dalia that she wasn't comfortable being in plain sight or passerby. Dalia says she didn't care. Though Dalia says, Dalia, she says didn't care. Minutes later, a nervous looking Wolf stares into the camera while wringing her hands. It doesn't matter if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling pouty. It should have been about you and I'm sorry. She says in the November 21, 2022 video review by the Rolling Stone. Wolfie claims that the apology was scripted by Delia, who was angry that she dared to push back against his request. The two had met in March 2020 when Wolf responding to Delia's Instagram stories during the early days of the pandemic. She was familiar with Delia through the sitcom Whitney and recently finished the second season of You. Cooped up in her home in Canada and recently separated from her husband, who was still living with for the sake of her young daughter, Wolf describes needing a distraction. And a one-off message to an attractive comedian seemed harmless. Within minutes, Delia responded. Wolf says the conversation moved to Snapchat. By the end of the day, Delia requested a nude photograph. Wolf obliged. So she didn't know this guy from Adam. DMs him and then sends him a nude within a day or the same day. I'm sorry, but if you're not a, if you're not involved, that's a bit funny style. Now, no one's saying that what he did to her after the fact was, you know, um, acceptable or was right, but 
you know, reading reading as a stranger, not knowing this lady, you're allowed to say that's a bit crazy. That's a bit nuts. But we go back to the statement. I've been called stupid countless times because I entered into this situation and stayed with him. I was very vulnerable. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, anyway, I was very vulnerable spot when I met him. I was fragile, I was naive. In retrospect, I made a terrible choice in reaching out to him. I, yeah, of course, that's, that's, that's the truth of it. But this is like when DSP said he did the whole wanking in front of the camera thing because his girlfriend broke up with him. It's like, come on. Like, okay, I guess so. But anyway, let's let's continue back to the next thing. Um, uh, I felt safe with him. It felt safe. Imagine Chris Alia making you feel safe. That's how you know this guy's a manipulative piece of shit, isn't it? That degenerate makes people feel safe. Anyway, next page. It felt okay, but it couldn't have been further from it. it if it was, sorry, if this was me now, I wouldn't give him the time of day. What people don't seem to understand is that the control didn't happen all at once. He incrementally implemented these rules and ideals slowly so that the red flags weren't glaringly obvious. Okay, so she's saying she was in a vulnerable position. Um and Chris basically exploited it. He kind of sensed her weakness, which again is so fucking sick in it, in a way, because some, I think I asked it before in the last stream, some way in shape or form, I don't know how this is possible, but for some reason, predators and creepos like Chris always seem to attract girls like this. But in this instance, this girl reached out to him. You know how weird that is? Like you're vulnerable, you're in a weird place, and the last person you need in your life is a Crystalia. The last person you need is someone like that, right? You don't need to have someone like that in your life when you're going through a breakup, when you're separated with your husband, but you're living together, you have to look after a young child, struggling with a job, with a career. The last thing you need is to come across a Crystalia. But somehow you reach out to him and he senses your weakness, your vulnerability, like a fucking demon and fucking, you know, latches onto you and doesn't let go horrible isn't it fucking horrendous um he began to make semi semi-degrading comments but he would frame it as purely a kink thing what like saying to her like she looks like shit like so he'd be negging her in a way i'm assuming right um eventually it bled into our entire relationship i was constantly told i didn't matter <laughs> Uh, that's a brendan line that's a brendan Shaw blind <laughs> it simply do not matter <laughs> that feeling my physical and emotional pain came seconds to his pleasure i wasn't allowed to talk to anyone about him so he was my only confident a confidant sorry and if it was about him i was out of luck he started telling me that if i was to say no to him in any way he would ice me out he says he wouldn't keep a girl who disobeys. And I remember that being a message I saved, he made me unsave it, stating he wouldn't want anything creepy to be kept in the chat. So he's deleting chats, he's removing things, everything's sent in the fucking auto-delete fucking message, the control, the manipulation, fucking now, yeah, what an absolute horror show. And again, this reminds me again why he was so quiet and disappeared for so long. Because like I said previously, if I don't remember the if I if I don't remember my law correctly, I'm pretty sure I do. But I'm sure when Chris started out, he was kind of safe. Sorry, what was it called? Um, he was clean, if I'm not mistaken. He didn't swear. I'm sure that's a thing. He was clean, um, and he had this kind of persona on stage where he was kind of goofy and acting like a teenager when he wasn't, right? But to me, I never really liked Chris Lee's stand up specials because he had that weird inflection in his voice. He would kind of speak like a child, like yeah, yeah, like a toddler. I don't know why he did that personally, but it could have been another kind of weird thing to kind of, you know, signal to girls out there and shit. But I never liked that shit that he did. I thought that was really cringe. Um, but I thought because of that image he had, when it came out that he was into this dark shit he's into and that he potentially might be a bit of a, you know, bit of a diddler and shit, it was such a clash it went such against how he was presented or presented himself, you know, himself on his content that, you know, he could basically expose himself to everybody that he kind of couldn't come around to like being in front of people again, knowing that they knew his secret. That's what basically was the reason why he went quiet. Not because he was ashamed of what he did. He was more ashamed that we all knew his secret, basically. That's why he went so silent and refused to do anything for like a year, I think, um, when the first allegations dropped. 
he continues. He acted as though he was doing what he was. Uh, he was acted as though he was doing what was for our benefit, tracking my location because he couldn't be there to look out, having me dress a certain way to keep me safe. And again, at the point I was at in my life, it felt nice to have somebody seemingly taking a ta active interest in my well-being. God Almighty, man! There's people out there that just need a lot of just a just not even love. They just want someone to feel like they give a shit fucking hell that's a sad bit about it isn't it there are people out there that just need someone to make them feel like someone gives a shit about them not even sexual not, do you know what I mean just somebody gives a shit of course it helps if you're attracted to them fair but they just want to feel like somebody gives a shit fucking hell and then you end up in the fucking snares and the spider web of this fucking awful dude. Anyway, then over time, this evolved into a level of control and ownership that I never would have signed up for in the beginning. But step by step, he got desensitized. Step by step, you get desensitized, sorry, which is something highly skilled manipulators know how to do very well. Chris began holding money over my head. I was depending on his promised monetary assistance. And since I had received financial help in the beginning, it seemed likely he was truthful in that regard. On two occasion, additional occasions, he would pay me cash in order to help with my travel expenses. Oh, no. So he offered her money. Then he took it away. Then he started dangling it over her head. Fucking hell. That's awful. At the point, I'd lost all of my friendships, pushed away my family. And he made me feel sometimes by telling me verbatim that that he was all i had you hold on to that person and thought you knew in the beginning and you'll die um you do anything to get them back to get to get back to that this kind of sounds like a, like another version of like love bombing you know when somebody goes really crazy meeting the first person for the first time and like dropping i love yous and shit i need you you're my world blah 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 it feels like a version of that isn't it that level of manipulation like coming out the gate super hard um, to kind of have like a hold on them straight away type of thing. Um, it continues. If that if it was physically abusive, which it bordered by eliminating the option for consent, nobody would sit here and say, why didn't you just leave him? And even though he never struck me more than a slap, pff, the fact that he slapped, oh, Jesus Christ. I was afraid for my safety. I guess maybe the slap was kink. I don't know, but still, a slap is still bad. It doesn't matter if he didn't hit you with a closed fist. That is still bad. But again, see, that's manipulation. She's doubting herself and basically convincing herself that this wasn't a big deal. Anyway, I was afraid of him, but I was also terrified of what my life would look like without him. There were many times when his sexual interests and requirements made me severely uncomfortable. He detailed to me how he wanted me to make him pass. Hold on. He detailed to me how he wanted to make me pass out while giving him head. He said he would make it so that I couldn't move or breathe until I passed out. <laughs> when he had physical encounters, he would hold my head down. I'd be afraid that I wouldn't be able to come back up. He was typically very aggressive, aside from a time or two, yelling at you if you didn't immediately do what he said sexually. He claimed over and over that he owned me that my body was his or that my body was for him and his pleasure alone did you guys again be be honest because i don't i don't i didn't know this but did you guys have a feeling that he had this dark energy in him like this or that he had this kind of level of kink or this level of interest i would never have guessed it before the allegations the crystalia you knew of like being a silly goose that is it though that crystalia did you guess it i didn't guess it I'd always think he was weird about the whole like being completely stone cold sober and not doing any drugs or or drinking anything. That always made me think a little bit. Mm. A man with no vice is somebody that he shouldn't really be trusted, especially the way he used to like boast about it and act like he was better than people because he didn't drink or do drugs. That that made me look a bit funny, but I would have never guessed he was this dark. What are people saying? People saying, yeah, damn right. Uh, Brandon said, damn right. Tesheski, look at his eyes. Fair play. <laughs> Megan said, mega fan say full of dents yeah method acting Coyle saying yes since day one bruh he gives me the occult vibes okay cloud k maybe it's me i'm naive i'd never really saw that i thought it was weird that he didn't have a vice but i never thought he'd be this dark he admitted to all this during the 10 minute pod okay quite didn't know this yeah past the diddler <laughs> past the diddler vibes yeah it's just plain coercion not consent of course yeah 
Oh, yeah, true. Good point, Cola. Definitely, you've... Good point, isn't it? You've passed the vibes. He does give that, isn't it? He really does. Creepy, you've passed the vibes for sure. Come back to the room. Let's do let's do a let's do Bible study. Come to my house to do Bible study. Help me with this. Help me with my outfit. Opens the door in a, in a fucking bathrobe and shit. Um, God tells me I have to pray for you, womb and something, and touches you down below. Maga, maga, maga. Continues. Um, it was for him to me, and that he snapped. Sorry. Um, once he was doing something to me, and he snapped when I actually got into yelling. This isn't for you. Focus on me, he said. He created his hierarchy within his relationships with everyone competing to be his favorite. Okay, this, this, this I can see. This I can definitely see. If you guys, do you guys remember the crew he used to hang around with? Um, I forgot what he used to call them. There was that guy called One Fire that he used to always talk about in his podcast and a few other guys. Oh, there was that guy that, um, I wish I remember his name. I think he's like, he's like an Italian dude um, that he used to have in his crew who was kind of complaining everyone was, when the first allegations came out, everyone was attacking him because I think the allegations came out that he was setting up the girls for him and shit. So I remember when he had that crew of guys he'd hang around with, you got the feeling a lot of those guys were trying to be his best friend. They were, they were jostling to be his best friend. And even now you get the feeling like Chris, you know, Brand Brendan basically, you know, by paying Chris Aaliyah's money, he basically leapfrogged Brian Callan. Now Brendan is more... Chris D'Elia's best friend and Brian Callan is even though Chris has known Brian for longer so Brian, Brian, Chris definitely has this ability to make people compete for his love and friendship and shit um, which definitely isn't just like you know reserved for the ladies definitely see the fellas also doing it continue anyway Chris played a lot of mind games and trying to push into a state where he was only the person we trusted the only one we could talk to although plenty of subjects were off the table he'd threaten to leave if we brought them up i.e. Charlie, a girl I had contacted, connected, sorry, with on Reddit who was already seeing Chris when the first wave allegations came out. He didn't want us to talk because as we came to learn later, he was feeding us both very different narratives and he didn't want us to figure out the truth. He pitted me against her, making me believe she was stalking me, intentionally setting the same tattoos as me, buying the same clothes as me, trying to harass me and my family, monitoring my social media, when really Chris was orchestrating all of it. Fucking hell, man. This guy's a sicko. This is what I mean. Like, all of this stuff, I guess, in some ways, isn't exactly stuff that can land you in prison. Cool. But if this is me and this is my friend, I'm sorry, we're not friends anymore. I'm sorry. It's not that difficult. There's plenty of other people I can find who, I can, who could be my friend who won't do this type of shit. If I find this out, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing that's weird to wrap my head around with these comedy guys. None of this stuff is probably enough to get somebody locked up. I understand this. But still, are you comfortable with this guy hanging around you and your wife, your sister, your mother-in-law, like sister, like really nieces, nephews? Are you fine with this person being cool with you? Like going to come into your house and shit? Not for me, bruh. Not for me. Anyway, it continues. It wound up this uh, I wound up discovering that he was picking. Let's go to the next slide. He was picking out his girl's tattoos as well, while claiming to me that he had no idea what she got done. Um, we had no autonomy, no choice in our hair, makeup, nails, clothes, tattoos, body shapes, where we went, what we did, who we saw. Yo, this is very very creepy i don't care this is super creepy this guy's meant to be a married man with a baby by the way right and he's running all this entire scheme on the side yo um it was all dedicated to chris seeing that charlie was in a 10-year relationship with chris that began when she was 16 and ran up until last year pedo 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 there we go Pedo confirmed. Pedo confirmed. Even if that's the legal age, what age was fucking Chris at the time? Even if that age is legal in that state they're in, what age was Chris at the time? Probably 30? A 30-year-old going out with a 16-year-old, especially a 30 that looks like Chris Lear. He's always looked 30. Even when he was 25, he looked fucking 30. That's pedo confirmed. Holy shit. 
We were both hoping that she would participate in the Rolling Stones article, but with growing fears of what Chris would do in response, she pulled out and the article had to be rewritten from a different angle. You see what's funny about this? What can this guy really do to these girls, really? He can't really do nothing. But the manipulation and the mind control and the way he's broken them down as people has now had long-lasting effects to the point where they're legitimately afraid of him when he really can't do anything to them, to be honest. There's nothing he can actually do. Um, for sh like, really and truly. He's not that powerful. But he's made himself powerful by the levels of manipulation and control and coercion, all this fucking sh evil shit all over time. And that's what it is. It's fucking evil. Legit evil. And this guy's meant to be the silly goose on stage and shit. And here he is on the side, destroying all these women's lives. Fucking hell. He subjected myself and many other girls to severe emotional blackmail. It was classic narcissist abuse. Just because the tactics are textbook, that doesn't mean they aren't effective. People who are emotionally vulnerable, unfortunately, are at higher risk of falling under narcissistic control and into abusive situations. It was not merely the threat of suicide when we would try to leave, but the threat of punishment, the statement that he'd find us. And the concern of that, what he would do in various aspects of our fucking now, you'd be threatening to self expire himself. Oh my God. Lives, it, uh, lives he was involved in. Um, this, what's that? The sinisterly embedded idea that he would do nothing to live for beyond our relationship with him. All of which that made it so incredibly difficult to walk away. If you were sorry, if you were compliant, you were rewarded. The reward was simply him not being angry with you, calling you a good girl. <laughs> isn't isn't this what fucking um Brian Callen says? Good girl, good girl. Um, making you his favorite and not giving you a, an additional punishment. Punishments threatened were more public and or vulgar consequences. He would have you masturbate in public, pee in public places vocally say his name during masturbations within earshot of other people masturbate in vehicles with other people painfully insert objects or artifacts uh, deep throw a toy until you either puked bled or were cut off by physical limitations he would have you piss on your own face <laughs> oh fucking hell man if you're a Crystal Lear fan still now, you're defending the guy, I have to look at you weird as well. I have to just assume you're into some sick shit and you might be a diddler and you might be a pedo. Simple as, I'm sorry. If you're making excuses for this and you're a fan, um, anyway, continue. Um, he, would he, he would have you piss on your own face, would piss on articles of clothing, force the person to wear them, have them defecate on the floor and film it for him. Make them perform sexual acts on his friends or strangers. Jesus Christ. These are all things I either learned firsthand, he told me about, or I discovered through getting to know other girls who were in relationship with him. Chris and I discussed on multiple occasions the fact that I struggled with an eating disorder in the past. He took active interest in my weight, asking me for my measurements. Originally, I believed this was because he was monitoring my recovery until he began to make comments about wanting me to be thin. When my digital scale would be put into an underweight category, he would tell me how hot I was. He would compliment being able to see my bones and muscles. With his encouragement, I dropped over 20 pounds to the lowest weight I've ever been. I was using incredibly dangerous methods to drop weight fast. I had severe anxiety about eating fast food, knowing he was monitoring my whereabouts. So I guess he would see if she pulled up to uh, in and out and shit. Oh, God almighty. As time went on, I was told I needed to respond to him immediately. That there was no excuse for a delayed response. So I remained in constant state of anxiety, not knowing what he would demand of me at any given time. I was admitted, I was admitted to an intensive, I'm guessing. I was admitted to an intent at any given time. I was admitted to an inpatient facility for my anxiety, depression and PTSD as a direct result of why I enjoyed with Crystalia. I felt responsible for his happiness. I was constantly afraid of him doing something to himself as I was often told um, it would be my fault if he did. He wanted me to live for him. 
to be willing to do anything to make sure he was taken care of. And for a time I did. I don't know that I'll ever be the same after this. Bloody hell, that breaks my heart. It has taken me months to rewire beliefs that had deeply that he had deeply installed in me. And to this day, I'm still working on healing and finding peace in the situation where I've never received acknowledgement or closure. Oh, God almighty. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got no words. Fucking hell. This guy sounds like a legit demon fucking hell a legit demon and these guys still ride for him still defend him still sit next to the guy make money with the guy it's just i don't know i don't know again maybe who knows maybe there's more to it maybe they have information that we don't have but i just couldn't i just couldn't understand i just couldn't look at you the same if i heard this if i just heard i couldn't look at you the same let alone get on camera and pretend we're friends and joking and laughing around like I couldn't look at you the same. I'd be feeling a bit uneasy. Be like, yeah, what's going on? Like, are you cool? I'd be like, no, nah, I'm not cool, actually. I found out X, Y, and Z. You know, it would be something you have to speak about. You couldn't just let it lie. You couldn't just say, bring the evidence. Where's the evidence? Where's the Bruh, are these accounts not enough for you? There's like more than 10, plus whatever else we've had before with other people saying stuff. Because you have to imagine, too, there was many victims that came out and said stuff initially but they all got shamed out of it because this is the part of the law people don't speak about. Do you remember when the first allegations came out? Um, yeah, and big up uh, Jazz, what's her name? Jasmine. Big up Jasmine for posting that on the Reddit. Uh, what's her name? Yeah, Jasmine Wolf. Big up Jasmine Wolf, man. Sending you an e-hug wherever you are. But do you remember when the first allegations came out? The law people forget is that the Crystalia fans were like hounding the victims online. I don't know why this was the case. This is why the Chris Lea uncensored subreddit started because for some reason the Chris Lea subreddit was full of people defending him saying he did nothing wrong. The girls reached out to him first. She was, you know, that age is legal in this state. He just likes to fuck a lot. He's just got a sex addiction. It's not that deep. Like this was the thing. Do you remember? That was an actual thing. Like people were legitimately defending him and the, the the fans were fucking hounding out the victims so a lot of those girls and victims who initially made statements deleted all their posts and shit or the accounts and kind of you know ran away because they were getting hounded out on social media so there's probably way more victims that we don't even know about who just don't want to you know say anything because they don't want all the attention and people coming after them and whatnot so wow what a fucking crazy update absolutely crazy update um again not sure what's going to happen going forward it's not looking good obviously optics wise for him clearly but i don't know if it's actually going to make a difference that's the absolutely sad unfortunate state of affairs you know what i mean like what's it actually going to do in the real world i don't know that's the only 